What's going on guys, it's Rob with Heroes Avenue. Welcome to this Sunday's Reading the Comments video. If you've been following our channel, you know that on Sundays we dig into the comments section, talk about whatever you guys had to say about our previous videos. And in this particular video, as promised, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Batman animated Hush movie that came out recently. So if you have not yet seen that movie, just know that we may get into a little bit of spoiler territory, so this is just a warning. But to be honest, in these animated movies, I don't mind being spoiled just a little bit, um, but you may. So if, if, you, if you don't want any spoilers and you plan on watching it, um, there is some spoilers here to come. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the comments. So I should first off start by saying that originally why we wanted to do this follow-up video to the hush is because I read a comment from Johnny MP here who says can we do the Batman movie comment video I really want to talk more about this movie and what it'll bring as a trilogy and probably in the DCEU 2.0 um, so when I was when he commented on that video I was talking and giving my feelings on uh, the animated hush movie so I thought that's what he wanted to do and I said okay good that sounds like that sounds like it uh, makes sense because a lot of people still haven't seen hush so let's do a follow-up video when more people get a little bit more time and a chance to see it um, so apologize Johnny MP for not reading your comment correctly but we will definitely talk more about the Batman soon um, there's definitely a lot to talk about and some of you guys have thrown in some great great casting choices um, for that movie. Maybe we'll read some more of those comments later and uh, maybe we can get to other comments from other videos But we're gonna focus on hush first. So if you followed our community tab on YouTube um, I did post this right here. It says have you guys seen Batman hush yet? We're gonna do a follow-up video to our review this week Let us know what you thought of it because I haven't heard from a lot of you guys who I know um, Are fans of the animated show so or animated uh, movies so again spoiler warning just in case you may not want to be spoiled for this movie let's go ahead and start off with generic o's who says seven out of ten if you didn't read the source material five out of ten if you did so there's his ratings and i thought that was pretty funny um seven out of ten uh i, I, would, I would give it a 6.5 out of ten overall um, and he says that it's if you and he says seven out of ten if you didn't read the source material and that makes total sense because a lot of people who did read who did read the source material whether it's for Batman Hush or for any other storyline um, from any um, comic book property if you read the original source material you tend to hold things closer to your heart and are more critical when they stray from the story and um, you know it, it, it goes it, this goes uh, this goes for things outside of comic books as well you know um, I am a big fan of the Game of Thrones uh, Song of Ice and Fire series by George R.R. R. Martin and of course the Game of Thrones TV show is is was the biggest TV show out there and I was so critical of these past few seasons as they deviated away from the books and um, I, I'm gonna share this meme right here. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen this meme yet, or if you do see this meme, this is an incredible depiction of what I thought about that show. But that just this is just an example of one of those instances where, you know, the y people will call you a book snob or or comic book snob, whatever, just because you're more critical um, since you did read the source material and it deviated. So um, I totally feel you right there. And um, for me, I would give the movie at a 6.5 out of 10. Um, and he. <laughs> And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys were rating it down below if you didn't give me a rating. I know a lot of you guys gave me your thoughts, but didn't give me your exact rating. Let me know what you guys thought. So, um, C. Chia says, saw it and it feels a bit anticlimactic when Riddler revealed to be Hush. Just like in Gaslight, Jim Gordon is the Jack is Jack the Ripper just weird? I understand that the DCEU will tweak the characters from comic book for their live adaptations. I'd rather they use the back the original characters but enhance the story with a grittier, darker, brutal motivation that drives Hush to haunt who to hunt down Batman. I was hoping to know more about Tommy Elliot and the character just left me hanging. Dot dot dot. And yes, I think um, especially um, going it felt definitely anticlimactic for me as well um, and I think part of the flaw of this movie is that it didn't really explore the character of Thomas Elliot all that much whereas in the comic book you know you do get um, you do get flashbacks to to Bruce and Tommy um, as kids and I think you might have got a little scene or a dialogue or a monologue whatever you want to call it in in this movie but um, 
but it, he j it just wasn't explored that much. You didn't get uh, invested. Um, you didn't get invested in Thomas as a character in this movie. And even if you did, there's this one scene in the movie where he walks out of uh, what is it, the kitchen or the bar or or the surgery room, and he has this weird guilty smirk on his face. So again. Those who read the comic assume, okay, they're definitely going down the route of uh, what you think is going to happen. And then when they do subvert your expectations, it just doesn't feel earned because that scene doesn't make sense. And um, and we and and, and, Th and Thomas Elliot's death in the movie, it just holds no weight because you didn't explain his character so much in the movie, or you didn't give us a lot of time with that character. So that's just how I felt. And uh, thanks for your comment, C Chia. I felt uh, I do agree with you. Nathan Smith says I haven't, so I've been. I have been reading the comic, and when it comes out, um, watch the animated version. Is it, has it not come out yet? I don't know how I watched this movie. I'm not sure. Some of you guys have said you haven't seen it because they're waiting for it. Um, I guess it hasn't come out for some people. But yeah, reading the comic book first, man, that, it's definitely one of my favorite comic book stories, um, especially because it's one of those stories that I started out like. It's one of the first Batman stories I've read. Um, Devin Cavanaugh says, loved it. Simply that he loved it, so great. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you guys who are loving the uh, the the movie, um, and um, hopefully, you know, if you read the story afterwards, it it, it you'll love that even more. Um, so Shin uh, Akage says, I saw it and now I'm reading it. Oh, okay. So he he definitely he hasn't read the story. Now he 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 saw the. He saw the movie and went into reading the books, and I think that's sometimes the best way to go into um, go into material like this. For another example, I am a huge fan of Ready Player One, the book, and then when I watched the movie, extremely, extremely disappointed. While a lot of people loved that movie, um, for those of you who read the books, it changed a lot of things, and um, it just it just was not the same. So the DNA, the DNA was there, but it just wasn't the same. Um, so. Uh, if I had watched Ready Player One the movie first, I think I would have absolutely loved it. Well, reading the books, I would have loved it even more. Um, yeah, cool. Thanks for sharing that. Black Gaming says, I expect someone other than Riddler, but I enjoyed the movie. 7.6 out of 10. Okay, cool. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad a lot of people got to enjoy the movie. I, I don't know, I don't know what it was for me. I just, I felt like this movie just felt, um, there was something missing from this movie that didn't keep me as engaged as other DC movies, uh, animated movies. Um, but yeah, you know, the Riddler twist in there, um, it, it was it was definitely something I wasn't expecting, but it, it left me wanting a lot more. Sergio Lopez says he hasn't. The Empire of Valyria says I saw it. Where's Jason? Yeah, so if you guys have read the source material, there's this um, there's this uh, pretty you know shocking scene at the end where Jason Todd shows up. I'm not going to spoil it if you guys haven't read the book, but um, yeah, Jason was missing, and and it makes sense that. Um, you know, they're going to have to cut some things out because it was a massive story uh, with a ton of characters. Um, so let's go on to the next comment. And um, um, so Nico Burton says the Batman Hush movie is fine. The comic is personal and strong. Johnny MP, who, who was kind of the reason why we went into this video a little bit more when I read his comment wrong, says, I love the movie. Why does people always want definite comic book accuracy? I love that I had no idea about the twist and I loved the book. So if I wanted to read the book, I would. Man, that makes total sense. And again, I can always see things uh, for the most part on both sides of the aisle, though I tend to lean on one side. And and this leads to another, another question. Does this comic book accuracy, you know, is comic book accuracy something that um, that is absolutely necessary, and can it work for for movies and not just animated movies, but in general? Um, you know, this is almost like a, a continued discussion from one of our other reading the comic videos in which um, I talked about the Joker, and um, you know, people were upset that the Joker isn't going to follow exactly like the comic books, the, the storyline from the comic books, and and I argued that you know, as long as you can keep as long as you can keep the spirit of the the character and and not lose sight of that, um, or even the spirit of the story, then I think you know I'm okay with uh, them taking a lot of liberties. Um, and I, I, while I didn't love the movie, I do agree that um, I do agree that you know comic book accuracy is something that that it, it's not exactly needed. While um, I think a lot of comic book accurate moments can work, I do think as a whole it's it's not very it's not very practical to translate um, exactly, and um, I think people who ask for exact comic book accuracy, I think you just got to think about how hard 
comics are to uh, are to get into. For example, if someone who doesn't have um, a vast um, knowledge of the Batman lore or 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 characters, if you jumped into the Hush storyline, the comic book storyline, you'll be completely you'll be completely um, confused. And I did that with my girlfriend. I I, threw, I I had the book, so I gave it to her to read, and she was like, "Who's this character? Who's this character?" Um, you know, what's up with Batman and this kryptonite ring? He just keeps one on the side. So you don't know that there's a lot of things about these characters that you don't get in comic books or, or storylines if you haven't done the research or have been a, a someone who follows all of these storylines. So I do agree that you can't have comic book accuracy all the time. I do think keeping in spirit with the comic and character is important, but direct translations are like impossible to make sometimes. Um, so um, yeah, I think, uh, but but yeah, um, I don't want comic book accuracy, but um, I do, I did not love the movie. I think comic book accuracy was not the reason I didn't like the movie. I do think it was missing some things like I talked about earlier, like us getting getting a little bit more and invested into Thomas Elliot. I feel like the, us falling in love with the characters, um, you know, was the problem. Like we, it did focus a lot on Bruce and Selena Kyle's relationship, and I like that. But I, I think it it, um, it it missed out on establishing this Hush character um, as a whole, as well as Thomas Elliot. So that's how that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think about. Um, you know these, this whole comic book accuracy thing because while I know I'm deviating from his exact comments about this movie I do think it's there's a wider discussion to be had for the comic book uh, movie realm where um, you know people are complaining that we don't get comic book accurate stuff in in the movies where I think sometimes or a lot of the times almost 100% of the time Hollywood needs to change things up um, for the sake of character development and and audience retention and understanding. So, I mean, that's what I think. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, do you think a comic book accurate hush would have worked for an animated movie? And do you think comic book accuracy is something that can actually be achieved in Hollywood and be successful? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, let's see, is there any other comments about this? I think I've read this comment in a previous video. So yeah, that's all the comments we had uh, coming from the Batman Hush side of things. Um, let's see if we can uh, end this video with a few more comments from another previous video that I had. Okay, this is from the Dark Side and the Furies video that I put out earlier this week. It says, Thanos ain't got nothing on Big Bad Dark Side. DC all day, every day, great video. Um, and uh, Ashraf, and um, I'm, I apologize if I said your name wrong. It says Thanos was a copy of Dark Side, so obviously he's got nothing on the evil Lord of Apocalypse. Um, true, one million, one hundred million percent ripped off. You stated it. Um, yeah, a lot of characters get ripped off from other people, so I'm. <laughs> but yeah, definitely Dark Side came first, and I cannot wait to see Dark Side in the video. And then um, she Ray says, I hope they do Ray Porter justice, allow him to reprise his role. And I, I had actually comments on this video said, that would be awesome bone to throw, that would be an awesome bone to throw to the fans. All the way on the bottom says, they actually need a good actor to play the role, not just voice dark side, whoa. Thanos worked so well because he not only sounded great, but the motion capture also looked real and was played by a charismatic actor. Ray Porter might sound great, but how's his acting? Very good question to uh, and, and point to bring up. You know, he's mostly known for a voice actor, and um, what made Thanos so great on screen was that uh, Josh Brolin played him to perfection um, and they managed to capture all the details and acting on his face. That was amazing. Thanos was definitely a game changer and they need something, um, they need to, a, a great actor to definitely knock out Darkseid or, or to play Darkseid to knock out the role. Um, so let's see what else he said down in this comment thread. Um, ooh, okay, DB Chuby. Toby, I'm not sure how to say that, says, um, Jeff Bridges should be dark side. Ooh, I love that. And then all the way response. Now, my friend, is something I would all be for. Jeff Bridges, Jeff Bridges' voice, absolutely amazing. Um, and and him as dark side, I think he was he was in MCU, right? He was um, Iron Man's villain, I forgot his name. Warmonger, something like that. But um, yeah, Jeff Bridges at Dark Side, I would not be mad. Though I, you know, uh, it would be great to throw like an Easter egg for Ray Porter to get his, um, uh, to just throw a bone to the fans, maybe in the in, in the New Gods movie, or maybe how about this, release the Snyder cut. Let's just do that. 
Okay, let's end it with that. Um, thanks, guys, for watching this video. Let me know what you guys thought um, on the topics we had below. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Just a heads up, I will be in LA next week, so my video postings might be a little wonky. I'm definitely going to do some vlogs. It's my birthday week in LA, and I'm definitely going to share my time out there with you guys. Definitely going to be hitting the WB tour, so I'll show you what that looks like. So, um, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Stay tuned for more videos. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.